Hello, YouTubers. Joe Kersey here on uh, Friday. Man, I thought it was Saturday when I woke up this morning. It's Friday, September 15th. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's officially the Ides of September or not, but uh, Friday, September 15th, 2017 at 15.08 in the afternoon Eastern time. How do you like my haircut? I gave myself a haircut today. Here, I'll, I'll spin around. I'll let you see the back. <laughs> uh, so I, I thought I'd go over, try to go over to the UK and not inflict some sort of low-life looking head upon them. Uh, I probably won't have to cut my hair again until March or April because, you know, it's winter's going to come on and, I, you know, it, it's warmer, you know. That's called, that's, a, that's mostly the number three attachment on the Euro trimmers or Euro clippers and some proper scissors, you know. West German steel. Well, it was West German at the time. My dad gave me that before I went to college. He, that's one of the things he gave me before I went, to, went, went, went away to school. My nice, proper barber scissors. I don't know, maybe that was, maybe he thought that might be a fallback job for me if I crapped out. I don't know. <laughs> um... Interestingly, they've remained in pretty good shape over the years, despite, you know, having been through many moves and people maybe thinking they might want to try to use them for inappropriate things like cutting paper. No, 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 no. This is for hair only. Thank you very much. Um, well, uh, basically, this is another going to be sort of another brief, hopefully brief. I can hear the sighs of relief coming out from the internet right now. Uh, another brief uh, interlude, and maybe maybe probably one of the final interludes in the uh, saga of uh, Joe's unrequited love for the fellow from Australia. <clears throat> Because we, uh, we actually talked on the phone uh, this morning for about an hour and a half while he was driving up from where he lives to one of the bigger cities in Australia uh, to spend a weekend with his group of friends that he, he says they try to get together about every six months or so. And um, I think I probably said in previous videos, I had I'd sent him a fairly extended email about things. And we'd had a WhatsApp exchange. My son, by the way, said I was an emotional terrorist in all of this. There's some truth to that, probably. Uh, if viewed from the other party's side, it would certainly be true if 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 uh, I weren't in love with a guy and uh, was just trying to manipulate the guy to get laid. I wasn't trying to do that because I was in love with a guy. Now, if I hadn't been in love with a guy, yeah, I'd been a hell of an emotional terrorist and been totally asshole and in the wrong. But our son did take the time to respond very extensively to uh, uh, this situation uh, last night. We actually talked uh, on the FaceTime -y thing last night while he was cooking meat, which uh, uh, that, if you've ever 
seen him cook meat will strike fear into anybody's heart that loves meat that isn't overcooked, although he swears today to me this morning that the meat was not overcooked. I'll have to take his word for it because I wasn't eating it, so I'll take his word for it. But see, my definition of overcooked is anything that's much above room temperature. So, yeah, yeah, I'm an outlier in that as many as so many other things in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, so no, uh, my Australian friend and I, uh, well, he's a friend now. I mean, he's a friend. I mean, he, he wants to be a friend. He wants to stay a friend, and I want him to stay a friend. And, uh, he wants me to stay a friend, and uh, uh, pretty much, you know, he pretty much answered. Well, he didn't answer everything I was wanting to hear answered, but he answered enough to let me know that we're we're good. We're not good in the way I would like to be good, but we're good, and. Uh, in time, uh, you know, in time, uh, the love will ebb from my heart, I think, maybe. Maybe not. Maybe I'll stay there. Maybe that'll sort of just be there for the rest of my life, and I won't uh, ever really want anything more emotionally. But who knows? He, he kept saying, you got to go out and get laid. you got to go out and find somebody else. Well, I don't want to, I wasn't trying to find somebody when I, when he came along. I mean, I wasn't intending to try to say, oh, I want to go out and find somebody to fall in love with and live with. I don't want to do that now. It would be nice to not be alone. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it would be nice to get laid from time to time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but, you know, eventually if he sort of, you know, this, this gets behind me and, you know, uh, you know, the love turns into just liking and friendship, which, it, well, it probably will at the time. I don't know how long it's going to take me, but it will maybe, probably. In all likelihood. Um, no. But he says, get on Grinder, find somebody. Get on Grinder, find somebody. And I, and I said, I, I look at Grinder a lot. I said, but I don't, you know, there's really nothing. I mean, I don't want to do that. I mean, just, that's not. Well, I'm not looking for anything. I. You know, all, all this stuff is so superficial, so superficial to start. Well, it has to start out superficially, doesn't it, I guess, in a way. Uh, I don't I don't get anywhere I'm going to meet other gay guys. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to drive all the way down to downtown Columbus to go stand around in a fucking bar anymore. I mean, I used to do that, of course, you know, when I was in my late 20s, you know, coming out, yeah, I don't do that anymore, I don't need to do that, I don't do that, well, anyway, uh, whine, 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 and all that, but it was nice of him to uh, talk to me while he's driving through this fucking heavy rain up to, you know, this major place in Australia, major city in Australia, um, yeah, I mean, no, he answered, you know, he, he laid, well, I can't say he laid the rest of a lot of stuff, but he at least answered the stuff that I really wanted him to talk to me about, for the, mo for the most part. There's a mosquito here, so I'm going to clap my hand and nail it. Um, so... Now it's uh, up to me uh, and uh, sort of the natural processes that go along with this sort of thing to uh, 
bring me out the other side of this at some point. And God will take care of me. I know that. But I know God will take care of me. Um, he did. <laughs> yeah. Well, as my son pointed out, he says, you, he says, you badgered this guy too much on email and stuff. And I, I didn't think I did because, you know, uh, my other uh, two friends and I, we email back and forth all the time. Now, admittedly, sometimes we, we, we do that multiple times a day, uh, this, the one fellow in particular. but uh, And that's okay because that's fine by me, but uh, I, I never tried to do that with him. I might you know, just, if I saw something interesting or fun or a fun thought popped in my head, I was... But I, I, hadn't, I had not emailed him since Monday until yesterday. Um, uh, oh, that's four days, you know. Fuck. I thought I thought I'd given it a fair, fair gap there. So. Now I'm now I'm wondering, you know, should I, you know, let him know where I am when I'm traveling? I don't know. Maybe he didn't want to hear anything about my traveling. I don't know. Fuck it. If he does, fine. If he doesn't, fine. I'm. I'll decide that when I'm over there. Well, it's a two-way street. I think you have to fucking accommodate people who have different habits and backgrounds, you know. You know I don't know. Why, why should I be expected to completely accommodate to his fucking expectations about email etiquette or texting etiquette? Why can't he accommodate me? A bit. A bit. But, anyway, uh, I'm not going to fulfill his worst fear. And he knows what that worst fear is. So he's safe. You're safe. But your fault, I fell in love with you. Okay, I'm going to try to make this the last one in this series, actually. Uh, it's getting tiresome. It's getting tiresome for you all. It's getting tiresome for me, too, quite frankly. Uh, so, meanwhile, I've got, you know, all the major stuff ready to go for the trip. I still was, I was looking for my rules of the road book today, and I'm sure I'll find it again uh, the only thing I have problems with understanding are the box junctions. So, I mean, if, if I can't find it, that's not not a big deal. Uh, all the all the relevant reservations are made. And uh, so I'm just kind of in that nice state of living. Now, I am reading at church tomorrow, interestingly. No, it's not tomorrow. It's Saturday. So I'm reading in church on Sunday. Again, I'm still thinking it's Saturday. Uh, um, Tom Johnstone is going to read for me the following Sunday. And I don't know who's going to, how they're going to handle the first Sunday of October. And quite frankly, I really don't give a fuck. Um, at ten thirty, the the one guy can certainly do both readings. Uh, they'll just need somebody else to help with the wine. There's always uh, people out there that can help do do the wine and. Uh, no, I just have to figure something out, you know. Here's an idea. Why doesn't the interim rector do what our previous rectors have done and either assign the scheduling to somebody or schedule shit himself? But it ain't my problem because I'm going to be 2,800, 3,000, 3,300 3, miles away more properly. So, by the grace of God and by the grace of God coming back. So, I'm going to say bye bye, YouTubers, on this one. See, it was a little bit longer than I thought. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs>